before I start this project, everything in this video is referenced off of my other Cyclone video. But instead of making the separator, I decided to scale up my old design and make it into a collector. Therefore, it is more handy and compact. Everything I say in this video would follow the plans that I have available on my website and link in description if you're interested. However, this project is only a reference. The actual plan set is different from this build. It's merely just scaled up design from the plan to make this collector. Parts A, D, and E is being cut on the table saw and finalized on the bandsaw. Parts D and E is modified from the original plan set to match the diameter of the new collector. To cut the circles on the bandsaw, I made this quick little jig, which is a piece of plywood, attached with another piece of plywood underneath that slides along the edge of my bandsaw table. And then I drilled a hole on the piece of plywood with a dowel in the middle for the center point. And then I can rotate the circle around it to cut it. To save materials, parts E and D could be cut in one circle. Since the polycarbonate has a depth of 1 16th inch, the two circles would sandwich the polycarbonate perfectly together with a little trimming on part D. And here I took part A on the router table to route out a little rabbit on the edges so that it could fit onto my bucket perfectly. However, this bit's width is not long enough so I will have to draw a hole on my router table, place it in, and use my 1 4th inch router bit to extend the edges so that the rabbit would be larger and it would fit my bucket. After making the rabbit on part A, I could take it back to the bandsaw and cut out the little section in the middle so the dust could fall through it. To complete the rings for the bucket, I could merely just put glue in the cut marks, clamp it down and let it dry. And then I'm off to cutting the polycarbonate which is the wall of the collector. I first cut the rough dimensions of the width and length and then finalize it by cutting a small sections off each time as I fit through the rings that we just cut so I can make sure that it's a tight fit. And as you put the polycarbonate into the rings for a test fit, make sure that you hear a click before moving on to other procedures. And here I'm just finalizing part D by trimming a little bit off on my router table. Make sure you don't cut off too much material on the first pass or you'll have to cut a new circle. After that, I could cut part F on the table saw, finalizing the dimensions and cutting the cove by sliding it across the blade. Once again, this is only a reference, so the exact dimensions would not be the same as the plan set. Initially, I used this half inch plywood for part F, but after that, I replaced it with a 3 quarters inch because it's thicker. I marked two lines along the edges of the polycarbonate, marked with equal spacing and pre-drilled the holes. I then put the polycarbonate back into the rings, transfer the screw hole locations by drilling it into the plywood, and then secure it with screws. I then secure part D onto the bucket, and because it's floating in midair, I have to cut spacers to put on the bottom, slide it down, and then secure screws from the outside. I flip the bucket upside down and slid part A to the very bottom, once again transferring screw hole locations by drilling it into the plywood and secure it with screws. And after attaching the three rings, you will have a basic structure, which then I fasten part F onto. As you can see, the screw holes are a little bit too long for the piece of plywood, so later on, I replace part F with 3 quarters inch plywood. Well, after that, the bucket is basically all complete. And now, I will have to make the inlet port, which is part H. And I cut these parts on the table saw with a combination of my table saw sled. And I simply glue these pieces together clamp it down and wait for it to dry. And while the glue is drying, I can mark the location of the two points that the arc would connect. And then you can take part D and use the edges of the circle to mark the arc along those two points. Then I cut the arc on the bandsaw, making sure that it is close to the line but not directly on it, so then I could finalize it and fine tune it on the spindle sander. After the inlet box is complete, I could slide the inlet pipe into the box as a guide to cut the curve. To fasten the inlet pipe and the box, I first clamp it down to the bucket itself. Then I can use my phone's flashlight to shine a light through the inlet pipe and mark its location inside the bucket. Then I can trim the pipe on the table saw. And be sure to lower your blade after you're done cutting. And then I can use my multi-tool to cut the inlet hole onto the bucket. 
since I don't have a Dremel, I have to use my file and hand grind it down until the inlet hole and the pipe is flushed together. And so far basically we have every single material prepared. Now it's the assembly. Since I already have a circle roughly the size that would go in the inlet pipe, I wouldn't want to cut it again. So I taped this little circle with some painter's tape to buff the size. This is the part that will go on part G and the inlet pipe. I cut the inlet pipe to its final size on the table saw and I hot glue it onto a piece of lumber for stability so I could knock out a notch on the table saw safely. I first cut the start of the notch and the end of the notch and then I can work in the middle to remove all the material. To mark the pipe diameter onto part D, I used a drill bit to align the center holes of part D in the small circle, placed over the pipe and drew out the circumference of the pipe onto part D. I then cut out part G on the bandsaw using the leftover scrap from cutting part A. I glue the small disc onto part G using wood glue and align it with the center using the drill bit. I took apart the whole assembly to take out part D and used my jigsaw to cut the circle that I marked earlier. Once again, cut close to the line but not exactly on the line so we could fine tune it on the spindle sander for an exact fit of the pipe. I used hot glue to attach the pipe to the little disc and part G, however you could also use epoxy but for time purposes I used hot glue. The top of the pipe can then be attached to part D. And now it's time to disassemble the bucket itself. The inlet pipe of the bucket needs to be filled, so what I did for that is I cut out a little polycarbonate piece and I used bolts to secure it in place. Now that everything has been set up, I can finally remove the protective wrap on the polycarbonate and reassemble everything. However, I did not put any finish on the wooden materials because it's a shop project and I don't feel like it. After reassembly, the last thing to do is to seal every edge, and I did that with silicone. To make it look good, be sure to only put just a tiny amount bit of silicone on the edges and then use soapy water to smooth it out with your finger. I put the motor head inside the collector and I fasten it with three screws. And here you go, the finished dust collector. Well, this is it. This is the dust cyclone collector. Instead of separating with two buckets, the vacuum and the actual collector, this is a combined version of it. Once again, this is a reference to my old video, which is the cyclone separator. And if you're interested in that, there's a plan in the description. You could also go check out that video, but this is a reference off of that. This is a scaled up version of the old cyclone separator. And this is really handy because it's one unit instead of two units being moved around. This is only one unit. Overall, the performance of this collector is awesome. The big particle does fall into the bucket, but as you can see the top, as you use it several times, there would be a whole bunch of fine dust around the filter, but you don't have to change it that frequently because all the big dust is going to go down in this bucket. The fine dust will be collected up here, but that would be easy to clean off. Just take off this head blow it with your air comp compressed air and the dust will be gone but as you can see there is a little bit of a fine dust collecting around the filter area but overall the big dust goes into the bucket the filter is staying good although there's fine dust on it there is still a lot of suction in this vacuum once again this is only a reference build off of the cyclone separator if you actually purchase the plant set it would not be this it would be the cyclone separator not the collector itself but if you're interested, link in the description. You can also go check out the video, the Cyclone Separator. I'll put it somewhere in the screen. But that's it for now. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys next time.